All right, let's take a look at these legacy rifles from Daisy, the air rifle manufacturer in Arkansas. These rifles were made from 1988 through 91, just a short time. There were three different styles, a single shot bolt action. There was also a bolt action with a 10 round removable magazine. There's a semi-auto that uses a single stack mag. And then each of the three actions, I think, I'm still doing the research, but each of the three actions had stock options. You, we can see here the solid walnut options. There was also uh, an ABS plastic made by Monsanto. Uh, this is an example of the black model. There was also, you can see the wood grain, there was also a version that had a wood color as well and it really looked dead on like a wood stock from a distance. Very durable and utilitarian. These wood options are really nice though, and the same action and barrel and everything, but they just make a nicer package with the solid wood. Uh, the various options uh, at the time cost, I think, between $60 and $100, so they were affordable and pretty neat. So let's take a closer look at them. Like I mentioned, there's a couple of different actions. Those had they were designated with different model names. So this single shot bolt action um, is well it, right here on the side it's called it a 2201 however the blue book and other sources kind of aren't clear on the details of these so there was another style uh, this is a single shot as I mentioned so although it looks like there could be a magazine here there's no release there's no way to get a magazine out and if you look from the inside here there is no magazine it's just a, a chamber so this is the single shot bolt action this one though is an example of a multi-shot bolt action it has the same cutout on the bottom but there's a release and when you let gravity do the work for you the mag will fall out and you can see some similarities between this and the uh, Ruger 1022 mag fits right in and now we have a 10 shot bolt action with a removable magazine then we have the semi-auto version kind of neat, the uh, action rod or whatever that would be called, charging handle is up front here, in front of the handguard, and we can see the action, the uh, magazine is retained with these two tabs on either side, so you just clip it in, when you want it you just pinch it out. Uh, to release the bolt, you push down on this little tab next to the sling swivel. So I'll just take pressure off, push that in, and the bolt comes forward. Imagine if I just push it, it'll slap forward. Pretty neat action. Let's take a closer look at the rifles. We've got the barrel, which is like a plastic shroud. The front sight post is just part of that shroud. And it's got just a tab of white there as an indicator. It's very lightweight. It's just a steel barrel shrouded by this plastic outer uh, housing, I don't know what to call it. There's a dovetail back here for uh, rear sight, which is adjustable for both height and uh, windage. You can see there's a collet there, and that's to take the rifle apart. I'll take apart this other polymer one since these are so nice, uh, but it's neat. It's a breakdown. Then we get to the action, and it's made out of, I believe it's made out of Zamic, which is the same material that like die-cast cars are made out of and uh, it's an uh, alloy of zinc with aluminum and magnesium and copper I think and uh, it's a little easier to work with so it makes it less expensive to fin get a finished product made out of it uh, but because of its uh, it's got less strength and steel it sometimes needs to be a larger gun so something like a high point made out of the same material it's a very large pistol but something that's just going to shoot 22 uh, doesn't become unwieldy so even these as rifles designed for kids are very lightweight. The most, the heaviest one I think is six pounds or so. Uh, on top of the action here we see there's dovetails for a scope. Uh, there's mounts that will just clamp on there and provide an optic for you. Otherwise very clean, smooth, nothing to snag if you're walking with it or hunting rabbits or something or just uh, you know shooting it or cleaning it. Nothing really to get snagged on save for the uh, edges of the, the rear sight. I should mention the rear sight is plastic, so Magpul, you might think, was the first polymer uh, optic or iron sights, but uh, it's actually Daisy. 
Let's keep going backwards. Again, we had that magazine. We've got a cross bolt safety on the front of the trigger guard. Fire and safe. Then we've got the trigger, trigger guard, and this crazy button back here. We'll take a closer look at that again on the other rifle that uh, isn't all is already all beat up. And then the rest of the stock. And on these solid stock versions, that's about all you get. But there's a couple other features on the uh, the polymer versions. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, just to compare on this one, we've got 22 long rifle only, which makes sense because it is fed by a magazine. It would be difficult to feed short or anything else uh, through a long rifle magazine. And uh, nothing above it, just a blank. And a serial number, it's in the 600s. So next, we'll take a look at the single shot bolt action. And it's, zero, and it's got the model number written in the same cut out and again we've got 22 but this time short long and long rifle because of course it doesn't matter when you have just one chamber it can be any any of those three and then we've got a serial number that's into the 7000s already pretty interesting as a collector of firearms I really like these they're made here in the US it's always a plus uh, they're takedown which is neat because they're practical uh, there are versions of them that are more lucrative as far as an investment like these uh, then there's the versions like this let's call this one a shooter uh, that are already used uh, roughed up a bit and have been shot so you could take this thing out to the range or give it to a kid no one's really gonna get too upset uh, you're not hurting the value on it uh, the more expensive ones though are interesting as uh, potential investments because there were for so few made and because they were targeted towards kids even fewer of them survive in condition like these, uh, which were, uh, well, these aren't the two. There were actually Tucson Guns who's uh, letting us take a look at some of their collection here. We appreciate it. Uh, they're, uh, they're lending them to us for this. Uh, they, have a, uh, they have bought an estate of these or a bunch of these that a collector had owned, and they have a couple that were actually store samples. These are actually, though, new in the box. Looks like they bought them at Woolworth. I'm guessing somewhere between uh, 88 and 91. This you can see is the the model. Oops, I put it in frame here. The model 2211, which is interesting, because if we look at the actual rifle, it's marked marked 2201. So not a big deal, obviously, but interesting. Again, as a collector, to take, be aware of these little things. We got the serial and everything, and then wood stock. So this is the actual box that it came in. It's in pretty decent shape, all things considered. I guess that's an advantage of being out here in Arizona. It's got the piece of foam that kept it oriented in the box, which is neat. It's got the little card thing, which was actually on the trigger guard. It took it off for the video, so I didn't hurt it because it's unripped. And that's not a big deal, but as a collector, why not have it as true to brand new as possible? It shows us some of the features like the uh, bolt action, the removable trigger, and the breakdown barrel. We'll take a closer look at those. And then the, uh, the accessories that were available for it, which were the magazines and a sling. <laughs> I guess there was also a reflex optic and a, uh, excuse me, a point sight and a scope. But uh, again, interesting for the collector. Uh, we've got the manual. Obviously interesting. No dates on it. There we've got Rogers, Arkansas, though. And basically the manual talks about it. But one of the things I find most interesting about these particular sets is that they come with their boxes, and the tool to take it apart is still here in the packaging tape. So I think you might, well, I can see it because I'm used to what the tool looks like. It's sort of a, a handle with just a shape here at the top with two little teeth and those teeth go into the these little rivet or these little holes in the collet and let's take it back to to this uh, more beat up one and I'll show you how that works so both of those two are new in the box and have their tool still attached to the boxes I'm not going to open them up but this one uh, it's easy enough to show you with just this tool which is just a bent up punch and you can see I'm twisting the collet here and I'll do this basically a few times until it will open enough to 
come free of these two tabs. So there's these two tabs that once they swing free, you can just un you can just twist the barrel off. And that'll give us access to all the neat innards. So we've got the barrel again, which is just a thin barrel inside of this plastic shroud which holds the front sight attached to the front hand guard. And you can see everything's good to go there. This is 18 inches long. I think it's 18 inches long. Then we've got the rear assembly. And inside you can see that it's made out of Zamic. Uh, again, easy to machine and manufacture. A little heavy, but solid. Then if we were we talked about that little button. First, let's remove that mag, even though it's not going to shoot. So that would be just a good idea. Uh, it's interesting the way it's designed. You can pull this release forward, but there's nothing to hold on to until it slides out a bit. So you really have to let gravity help you with that. We talked about this button behind the trigger guard. Uh, you basically open the action, let it sit open, push that button, and then pull out the trigger set and pull out the bolt. So it does dis disassemble into a neat little package. Uh, the single shot would break down to even fewer because it wouldn't have a magazine. To reassemble it, you slide the bolt which has a little dovetail here at the bottom. Slide it into the little dovetail at the bottom of the chamber. Kind of leave it in place there. Bring the trigger group back up. And I just push pressure in. And as soon as you get that sweet spot, the uh, trigger group will just pop right back in. And that button will pop back out, and now it's back together. You can insert that magazine again. So you can imagine a kid playing with this out on the ranch or out camping. Could just have a lot of fun. Or it would be a practical gun for maybe the car or traveling because you can break it down, have it when necessary. Then you just tighten it up and it would be a little easier with the wrench that they supply it with. And that's all there is to it. So pretty neat. The wood ones work the exact same way. Uh, it's just that they don't have uh, the polymer furniture. Well, this is an uh, hopefully an interesting video for you. Uh, I'm a big fan of collecting firearms that um, are interesting mechanically. I'm a big fan of collecting firearms that are interesting pieces of history. I'm big fans of collecting guns that are uh, rungs in the ladder of U.S. firearms laws. And Daisy, an air rifle manufacturer who is not licensed, made a uh, caseless ammunition and then eventually actual rifles and that's got to be an interesting story I hadn't I, I have not been able to find a lot of information on that story on you know quick look on the web so I'm looking forward to doing more research on that uh, as I dig into more about these rifles so again, we want to thank our friends at Tucson Guns uh, for making these available to us I imagine they'll be for sale if they're not already sold I don't know when this video goes up and uh, stay tuned for other videos like this where we take a look at you know, real guns that are out there representing all these interesting facets of, of either society or firearms history. And they're obtainable and still shootable and super fun. So let us know what you think of this video and others like it uh, wherever you happen to see the video. And as always, thanks for watching.